Hello, and welcome to my presentation. So I'm going to be talking about a very important topic, and this has to do with uh, neutral networking. And both, both, of my, both of the features I'm going to be talking about is related to the L3 agent of Neutron. Okay, so these are some of the new features which have been enabled in Neutron to make Neutron uh, perform in such a way that we want it to perform for the cloud. Okay, and I say this is a very important topic because if you look at, um, if you remember Sun Microsystems a few years ago say that uh, the network is a computer, okay? And if that statement were true, I think it's even more important today because in the era of the cloud, the network is a cloud. And so if your network is down, you pretty much don't have a cloud. And so as a result of this, there has to be, um, when we design a network, we need to ensure that um, the networking is designed uh, to meet the specifications. So we need to ensure that we have good performance, uh, good scalability, and it also has to be fault tolerant, okay? So two features were introduced with the L3 agent starting from the Juno release. So if you haven't already heard about them, I'm sure you're gonna be hearing a lot about them from this time going forward, all right? So of the two features, one of them is called the L3 HA agent, okay? So we want to be able to have um, HA inbuilt with our L3 agent. Okay, which wasn't there before now. And the second improvement that was done is to you know, improve the performance of Neutron and also to make it uh, scalable, all right? And both of these we call the DVR, which is the Distributed Virtual Routing, okay? So my talk is not going to be a technical deep, deep dive. Rather, it's going to be a high-level presentation just to enable you to have a clear understanding of what these two features uh, were meant to do, all right? So pretty much my presentation, I'm going to talk about the problem, the solution, and how you may want to use the solution, which is what I mean by the best practices, all right? So first of all, let's talk about uh, the problems. So let's talk about the problem. Pretty much this is what the problems are, okay? For you to understand the, um, the problem, first of all, I'm going to talk about, um, give you a very view, uh, overview of the networking architecture for um, OpenStack, all right? So for those of you who are not very familiar with the architecture of OpenStack, I'm going to give you a kind of a one minute uh, primer, a kind of a quick overview of what the architecture entails, okay? So here on this slide, we have um, a, a, a typical architecture which you may have in the OpenStack deployment. We have a controller node, then we have a compute node, and we have also the network node. So typically, um, as again as you may understand, OpenStack has got a lot of components in, in, the, um, in the family, all right? Prominent among these components, we have three main components. Uh, we have the component for networking, which is called a neutron. Then we have the other one for compute, which is Nova. Then we have the one for storage, and that is Cinder. Okay? These are the three fundamental components we have, but of course there are so many of them. And so in this architecture we have here, you have a way to you know, structure this component in different ways so as to achieve a multi-node deployment. So in this architecture here, we have the controller node where you're going to be typically deploy all your APIs. Then we have the network node where you're going to deploy all the neutron components. And then we have the compute node where you're going to put your hypervisor along with some components of Nova, okay? But in this architecture, we're just going to concentrate on the network node, all right? So in this architecture, as we have it here, we say that the network node is just one, all right? So until the time of Juno, which is just the last release, you don't have the, um, the capability to make the, uh, the, the network node to be redundant, okay? So it means you, you, you need to have just one network node. What that means is that if your network node is down, your entire cloud is down. And like I said in the beginning, the network is a cloud. So you don't want to have a cloud where the network is not working because that simply means that you're not gonna have any access to your resources, okay? 
So that is the number one problem. You cannot do HA on the network node as we see it here. With Juno release going forward, that has been enabled. And so I'm going to discuss the solution, how it's implemented later on. So that is the first problem. The second problem, okay, the second problem, before we understand the, the second problem, we need to understand that Neutron enables you, the user, and the admin to create their own network topologies. All right, and this is the typical network topology that you may have in your cloud. You have the three-tier uh, um, topology where you have the web service at the front end, then you have the application at the middle layer, and then you have the database at the back end layer. All right, so in this kind of a deployment, it is, you're going to see, um, you're going to see a lot of communication between one tier and the, and the other tier. For example, you may need the, um, the web service to talk to the application, or you may need the application to talk to the database. And if you look at the architecture as it's done here, we connected the three of them using a router, a virtual router. So when a traffic is going from one network to the other network, it has to go through the virtual router. Okay? So let's illustrate how that is done here. So look at this diagram that we have in here. We have here um, the three tier applications, the app, the web, the app, and the database. Then we have the network node here to, the, to my right, okay? So you can see that before any of this tier can talk to the other tier, it has to go all the way to the network node before it has to come down to the layer that it needs to talk to. Even if both of them are on the same compute node, it has to go out to the network node and then come back. All right? You may not see it as a serious problem now, but look at this slide here. which is going to control all your routers, your virtual routers. And the way it's done here is using a protocol which most of you here are familiar with. It's called the VRRP, the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, which is an industry standard. So pretty much what this protocol is trying to do here is that it enables you to create as many network nodes as you, as you want, but all of them has to coordinate together. So there's going to be um, a separate network which is going to be used for monitoring all the L3 agents which are installed on all the, on the network node. So at any point in time, you're going to have a master network node. And whenever that one goes down, then the rest of the network node will discover and one of them will be elected to be the master node. So pretty much this is what the VRRP protocol is doing. So automatically, they will monitor themselves and they will elect um, a master node. You as an administrator, you don't have to worry. The client using the, um, the cloud doesn't have to worry at all because the, the deployment is going to heal itself, okay? So you can see that um, this is a very good solution. What that entails for the client is that each time you create um, um, a virtual router, the system will distribute it onto the rest of the, uh, the network node. So when you create a VM, the VM will have access to maybe two or more virtual routers. Again, if one of the virtual routers were to go down, again, the other virtual router will pick up and will help you with your communication. And this is done, like I said, using the VRRP protocol, and that was in place from the Juno release of OpenStack. All right, so solution, that is problem one, then solution one. Now, let's talk about solution two. 
Before you can understand solution two, you need to understand all the type of traffic that we have going on in your typical OpenStack deployment. There are three main traffic you're going to have. One of the uh, traffic is called the east-west. Now the east-west traffic is the one I the outside world. All of them need to um, go through the network node, and the network node will do the SNAT, which is kind of a port mapping between the instance and the public IP on your network node, all right? So that is the second type of um, network traffic. The third is the north-south floating IP. Now, certain instances, you need to have access to them directly from the, uh, from the internet. For example, maybe you're hosting a web service and your web service, you need people to access it from the internet. And so what that means is you need to give them a publicly routable IP address. And this is what we call the floating IP in OpenStack. So for the third type of communication, uh, which is within the floating IP, it means that they don't have to, go, um, they don't have to do SNAT. We, rather, we do what we call the DNAT, which is the destination network. So the traffic can go directly to the internet, as we can see with that red line over there. So three types of traffic. So now that you understood the three types of traffic that can, that can go on, the DVR solution, what it tries to do now is to say, let us split some of those traffic, move some of them onto the network node, and then let's leave maybe one or none on the network node. So apparently, at the moment, they've been able to move the east-west traffic and the north-south floating IP down to every compute node. So on the network node, you still have the north-south SNAT, all right? But the two have been moved down to the network node, uh, to, to each of the compute nodes. So you have your architecture here. Every compute node now is enabled to have L3 agent, okay? So that when those instances need to... So apparently, these are the two solutions which have been um, implemented. Ideally, in best practices, you want to make sure you have both of these solutions. You want to have your SNAT being enabled in your network node, and you want to have the DVR enabled on each of the compute nodes so that the SNAT traffic goes through your network node, and then the east-west and the uh, north-south floating IP goes through the compute node. Right? This is what you want to achieve. Unfortunately, though, you, you will not be able to achieve both of them at the moment because both cannot work together yet. However, with the, uh, with the coming, upcoming release of Liberty, they promise to have both of these features enabled, which means from the Liberty release, you should be able to have both of these solutions working. And really, um, I, I was just in the other talk um, before mine where they did a little bit of a deep dive into this concept, and they proved that the performance is really, really huge. When you implement these new modifications into the L3 agent, you achieve a lot of performance. Not only that, you now have the capability to have your L3 agent in HA mode, which is really where uh, we want to go in, um, with Neutron, all right? So pretty much, this is what I wanted to present. Two, um, two problems, two solutions. However, you might not be able to use both of them now, but with the next release of Liberty, you're going to have be able um, the luxury to use both of them together. Okay, so thanks so much. If you have, if you want more details on this, I have my email. Uh, please shoot me an email, and I will give you more detail. Otherwise, there are more deeper dive uh, presentations which you may want to attend during this summit. Thank you.